Why, why'd you put it there? For this. White women and white men who are up in arms about that scene are not up, are not up in arms about a real life murder of I'm a black you, man. Why did you I'm, put I'm that explaining scene to there? you. I'm explaining to you. Because white people who are up in arms over that scene are not up in arms when they see a black woman being raped by a white man. So why did you put that scene there? To prove a point that so racism point? exists. Welcome to The Fall Estate. I am Destiny Peterson. Don't forget that The Fall Estate is on Patreon. So click the little Patreon link in the description to support our work. I have with me today, very interesting guy, Dale Rastagini. Did I say that right? Yes, you did, sir. That's amazing. He is a prolific music video director and filmmaker. His latest film is called Cracker. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I read that you have done a lot of uh, videos and music videos and uh, over 400 hip hop, I believe, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's amazing. And over 400 rock video. Between the two, which one you prefer, hip hop or rock? You know, it, it, that's always a tough question. That question and what my favorite one is. I, I really take each one and each genre for what it is. I. I enjoy both. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't pick one over the other. I can understand that. And you have met a lot of these guys. Yes. Uh, some of them are well known, some are not as known. What is it like running into well known hip hop singers or, or each person has their own deal. Some some people buy into the fact that they're a celebrity. Some some artists uh, are more normal. It really depends, I think. I would I would assess that in understanding how they were maybe raised. I think that uh, is yeah. the best way to answer that, yeah. That's a good, that's a good point, man. Yeah. Having worked with so much, uh, so much in hip hop, do you identify with black culture or white culture or what culture you identify with now? So that's, uh, I've mostly really dated outside my race and my wife of 26 years is black. Um, you married to a black woman? Yes, yes. For 26 years? 26 years. Are you happy? You're very happy. You're not depressed? Not depressed. <laughs> so how do you do it? Normally black women beat up. Are you white, right? I'm white. Italian. You're white. No, Italian. Not Jewish by, not Jewish, uh, by uh, popular opinion on, on, on the trades right now. Oh, some people think you're Jewish? Yeah, yeah. The reaction to what we're going to talk about next has been every, a lot of these extreme uh, extremists feel as though I'm, I'm Jewish. But really? I'm Italian. I'm white. I love, my, I love my race as much as I love every other race, and that's, that's the best way I can put it. And so I didn't think of you as Jewish. You look more blackish, whitish, right. Italianish. Yes, exactly. But not Jewish. Right. <laughs> and so what made you marry a black woman? It wasn't I married a black woman. I just married a woman that, that, that got me. She understood me. Okay. And, uh, I, you know, I was raised as a working class kid in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, you know, I, I, didn't have a, I didn't have any preconceived notions about who I wanted to marry. It just, it just kind of ended up that way. Really? And you have children? No children. Really? Yeah. How many years? Uh, we've been together for 26 years. And so what's the point of marrying her if you're not going to have children? You know, you, you meet somebody and you have intentions, but if there is um, something that comes into play, like, like a medical condition where she, oh. where, where she can't have children. Oh, I got you. Uh, you know, we have big families. We still have on the table some adoption um, uh, opportunities. So yeah. So so we'll see. We'll see what the future. So are you is. disappointed that you can't have? She can't have your children. Not no, not at all. Did you really want children of your own? Uh, I so growing up in a pretty size, pretty good size Italian family, yeah. it's something um, you think about having, but yeah. it was never something that was dominant in my life. Uh, I grew up having aspirations and goals that kind of led me in the path that I'm on. And uh, I, f I feel like if, if, if I was meant to have children with her uh, naturally, then that would have happened. But I feel like there's other, other um, paths put in front of me that will lead me to um, some of those opportunities. Yeah. Are you the head of your wife? In terms of? Uh, are you you're a Christian? Yes. And you, do you know the order of God? Uh, you can. Feel free to break it down for me. 
God in Christ, Christ yeah. in man, yeah. man over woman, woman over children. Are you the head of your wife? I'm, I'm the head of the household, uh, to put it that way, uh, but I don't, I, don't, I don't see myself as being over her in some um, oppressive, uh, demeaning um, uh, perspective. And so, so you're saying you're the head of the house, but not the head of your wife? Uh, yes. But God said that men are the head of their wife, not the house. The woman came, you know, barefoot and pregnant and keep the house sure, going, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. So you can't be the head of the house, but you have a responsibility so, to be the head of your wife. So um, in that regards, my wife, um, Kim, uh, who's a beautiful, amazing woman, supportive woman, um, she, is, uh, she knows her responsibilities in our marriage, which she takes care of, as I know my responsibilities. Um, and I feel like when, it, when, you, when people start talking about the Bible and what's in the Bible, there's a lot of contradictions across the board that can lead us down a whole other Trevor Trove of, of, of conversation. Right. I want to move on to your movement. So you're saying so, you're not the head of her? No, I, I am. No, I, I, we, are, we are a uh, powerful, progressive, successful couple. What impact have... Um music videos had on the American values today? Oof, yeah. Music videos, music in general, entertainment in general, uh, it's certainly a big salad of hypocrisy. Yeah. Uh, uh, that being said, I try not to be too judgmental. As a, as a creative type, you, you know, you gotta balance. You gotta balance what it is you wanna do in life and trying to um, attain for certain things in your life, and so you got to often balance and make decisions on um, uh, how, how you get there. Yeah. And so when somebody, when a major label comes to me and presents me with a song and a date for a music video for an artist, uh, if I don't love that artist, uh, whether because I don't like the music or I don't like the content of the music, I, I see myself as sort of just a voyeur that's given a job to um, help this, this content be as successful as it can be. So I'm being, I'm being paid to utilize my skill that's been given to me to help somebody else have success. Oh, I see. In, in the music industry, what have you seen most, good or evil? I, I don't see it so much as good or evil. I see it as everybody's having, having opinions. And uh, since we are made up of a very diverse people in in, in, in cultures, especially here in America, yeah. and having been allowed to tour the world and do music videos in different regions, I, I see everybody as having um, a different opinion depending upon how they uh, are, are, are raised and what conditions they're raised. Is it due to family, I, the lack of good parents? I, f I just had a conversation re recently where I feel like this generation of kids who are growing up with, you know, technology and, and, and phones, uh, with, with information at their fingertips, they're, they're deprived of a certain decorum, the way I was raised, and I'm yeah. assuming the way you were raised. Yeah. At 8 o'clock, there was no TV, lights turned off, you're in bed. There, there was no device for us to sit and figure out, oh, how, does, how do they make this? Right. How do they do this? And, you know, all, all, the, all the technology is a blessing and a curse. So, so obviously, the, you know, a lot of the kids that are growing up who are in the very formative years, yeah. they get access to a lot of the bad, 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 bad things. So. I've noticed that most millennials and Zs lack more values. They, they seem to be immoral. Yeah. Have you noticed that? I, 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 uh, whether it's morals or respect of... Uh, of, of, of how things have been done and how, and, and, and how things have been done doesn't necessarily mean that they have to change. Because technology enables people to do things a lot faster than, than, than in prior decades, it doesn't mean that you have to lose respect for um, the order of things. Right. And um, when everything is so disruptive, it leads to a lot of rebellion. And yeah, sometimes that can lead to positives, but it does, also lead to a lot of different uh, problematic situations. Do good parents make bad children? I believe that bad children, for the most part, 
end up being bad because it's, it, it's, it's already in them. Uh, it's already I, in them? You think they were born bad? I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was adopted at uh, 16 weeks. I, my biological father, he was 18 years old, my biological mo mother was 17 years old, and based on the adoption records that my wife Kim found after years and years of r research and a lot, of, a lot of the laws being overturned where uh, adoptive children who previously didn't have access to their records now have records, right. based on those records, I found out my, my dad had a, uh, had a, um, a criminal history. And um, I was adopted by an amazing couple, my father who was a... Uh, a fireman and a, and a construction worker, uh, and my mother who was, uh, came over from England when they met. My dad was in the service. She worked in the school system. They were successful middle-class Americans. And my, 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 bio, my, my brother and my s two sisters, two were from my, bio, but from my adoptive parents, and my other sister was also adopted. They just kind of fell right in step with the way you would think that kids growing up in that environment should, should, should uh, should be affected. All right. Good school, good grades, um, uh, get along with everybody. I was, I was, um, I was sort of the, the black sheep of the family. And even though I knew right, I was still doing a lot of wrong. Yeah. And I, and for for many years, I just didn't know why I was doing it myself. So, and it took it took me into my late teens, early twenties, to finally get it right. And it was until I met my wife, Kim, that she kind of gave me a foundation to, and she saw the talent in me as a filmmaker, as creative, uh, to just let me sort of just give me that space to reset and then, and then move forward. But, but so I feel like kids, um, not every kid is born bad, but I feel like you can't blame parents for, for everything because there's a lot of stories of kids like me. And fortunately, uh, and I got locked up a few times as a kid. I spent a, a, a couple of years all combined, you know, different situations right. behind bars. And uh, I have no jailhouse tattoos. Uh, I can play spades as well as I can, you know, read the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> so yeah. I was able to um, really learn from those situations and, and, and grow. So uh, I think I was born with, with some bad in me. And, and, and just through the, the right love and attention, I was able to finally get through it. But it was by no fault of my parents was I... Were, 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 was I doing those bad things? So, do good parents make bad children? I think good parents do their best to to raise good children, and sometimes the the kids just they fall into the wrong they they fall into the into the into the wrong crowd. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of different um, uh, you know there's peer pressure. There's a lot of different uh, uh, you know um, lures for these kids to to to, to bite onto and, and go down some wrong paths. Uh, by and large, I think good parents make up the the bulk of our country, uh, and whether we want to get into bad parents and in socio economic discussion as well, who, that's a whole other discussion. But right. I think by and large, good parents make good children or raise good children, and kids' decisions sometimes um, get them on that path to doing wrong. And so, are you saying no, good parents do not? Make bad children, or yes, they do make bad children. Um, it, it's. It, I think I've. I try to do my best of saying. For the most part, I think good parents make good children, but it's. The, bad the, parents make bad children. Um, do bad parents make bad? I think that's 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 a really good uh, that's a really good uh, uh, conversation. Do bad parents? Do two young parents, assuming that they're young, who aren't really. Um, performing well as human beings in their own right who have kids, I think that leads to, yeah, those kids that they're having don't have as much of a, of a fighting chance to, to do good on this planet or in this country as, as uh, kids who are being born from good parents. So if I'm understanding you correctly, and then we move on, is you're saying, yes, bad parents make bad children, but good parents make good c children. On a macro level, that would be, uh, I, I, would, I would say that. Oh, okay. Um, did you ever meet your parents, your natural parents? No, no, it, 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 it's, really, it's really sad, you know. I tell you, like, I've seen my entire life, I've wondered what my biological dad... But why have you looked for them? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to that. So my whole life, I've wondered what they look like. And so after Kim did her due diligence, she actually was able to find addresses for them as, as law started to peel away. Because for many years, they were, they were you... You had no access to, right. to find them. Yeah. And 
So it was about maybe eight or nine years ago. She had addresses, and I went back to Boston where I was born, and I, I went to every address that my biological dad was supposed to have lived at, and the addresses where my biological mom would have lived at. And all the addresses for my dad went to one bad neighborhood, to the next bad neighborhood, to the, to, to the most worst neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. And my mom, biological mom, she ended up, ending at, she ended up at a retirement home, and, and I, finally, I finally got there. She wasn't home. But I felt like, oh wow, I finally found where she lived. So I left a note. And at this point, I was driving my X5 BMW, um, and I was successful after going through crazy years of being a bad kid and, yeah. and, 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 and all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, and I left a note at the front door saying, hey, bio mom, was raised by some great parents, and uh, check me out, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 30 minutes down the road, I get a call from the Catholic Charities Bureau, the people that actually who facilitated my adoption back in 1968, screaming, what are you doing? Why, why are you going to your bio mom's house? Wow, I'm amazing. Like, Whoa, I'm like, why not? Yeah. Well, we're we're supposed to be the ones that transact that situation, and if she wants to see you, she, I said, and I got I got irritated. I was like, what? I said, for forty at that point, forty four years, she can't get over whatever she was going through in 1968, and and uh, yeah, it was just uh, so. To this day, there's there's, still, there's there's been no there's been no contact. From either one of them. No, and it's annoying because here I am, you know, all these years you see these amazing reunion shows and Christmas stories and all these, all these loving stories of people reuniting. And you, you, um, I, I would hear one story where mom's, one mother says, every time I, my, my, my daughter or my son's birthday comes up, I light a candle for them and I can't wait to see them one day. There's none of that for me. And in fact, her then husband, who got on the phone with the Catholic Charities Bureau, said he understands the situation, why I want to meet her, but she said if I come back again, she's going to call the cops. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, man. And so do you still long for your father? You know how that little yeah, emptiness you is You know there? what? It's, it's, I never bought into that stuff when I was getting in trouble, and, um, and I can't say now that that maybe wasn't why I was doing some of those things. Yeah. I, maybe I'll never know, but I don't have a longing to, to, to now meet them because I've... I've come to the place where, you know, I've lived with them for 51 years and I don't know that I'll ever need them. But there is that little thing, I just want to see what the hell they look like. Like, I, you know, and, and when I speak to a lot of my friends, they, they really understand because they, they understand enough to know that they get to see their parents every day. They know yeah. where they come from. Yeah. And, they, and, and a lot of times where um, you maybe have a, uh, a genetic trait within your family, you kind of can look out for something. Yeah. I, have, I have nothing. I just, it's just, I have I no, 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 no background. So how do you deal with that emptiness in spite of being successful, you have a wife that you like, how do you deal with that emptiness? Um, I don't think that I, I don't deal with it. I, I just accepted it for what it is, uh, and I go. Do, and, do and, you realize it's a longing for your father? It's like a return. All people long to return to their fathers. Um, I I I accept that as as uh, as certainly a possibility, but not having ever met him, um, it's it's more like I want to know. I want to know why. Like, why was it given up? Was it a was it a uh, an economic thing? Was it a a love thing or what so was you it? giving up trying to find him? Uh, I, 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 I've not so much given up. Um, I've just stopped for now. I'm, I'm focused on other things, and right. there'll be a point where I think, you know, I th you know let, me, let yeah. me try this again. Good. So I got to talk about your movie, Cracker. When it says Cracker, are you talking about White Cracker? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you got to say it right. It's Cracker, not cracker. cracker. Yeah. <laughs> cracker. White Cracker. Yes. Amazing. And so what is the theme of the movie? So... It is, the log line is a white supremacist from present day gets thrust back to an alternate history where blacks rule. And I'm using science fiction right. as a Trojan horse to allow people, mostly white people, who I refer to as having white blindness as opposed to white ignorance, to see racism through a new perspective. I watched the trailer just an hour before coming out, and I noticed that so this white skinhead guy ended up back in time, and all of a sudden he's been treated by the blacks the way that it's been portrayed that blacks treated the whites. 
Is it possible that the way that it's been portrayed and the way you're doing it in this movie is wrong, that it did not happen like that? No. Why not? Let me ask you this. The same way we've seen blacks being treated in 12 Years a Slave and in Roots and in the underground, is that wrong or is that correct? Well, all those are all made up movies too for to enhance anger, to divide and conquer. It's not, those move, even Roots are not truly true. There's a lot of made up stuff in it that's not true. So um, I've seen a lot of news footage, um, archival footage. I've read uh, history books growing up, and uh, I've seen a lot of imagery of um, blacks being lynched and, and hung. Um, we've seen many movies o o over our lifetime. Right. Yeah. And, and my wife, Kim, in 1981, before I even knew her, her brother was, wa uh, was walking to school, FDU, uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University in New Jersey. And uh, he was accosted by two white boys who then picked him up, threw him over a bridge, and he died. And they were never charged by the FBI or the local police. Right. So that injustice, which has plagued the family for 39 years, um, that injustice sort of mirrors the injustice of what we've seen recently with the Ahmad, the Ahmads and the George Floyds and the Breonna Taylors. So from my perspective, you know, in growing up white and, and privileged uh, and having little interaction with a lot of black kids growing up because of where I grew up, but then later in life having a lot of in interaction um, with uh, blacks in entertainment and in, in the real world, I've only seen and heard and felt their pain versus not having ex been exposed to that on, on, on the white side. How did you come up with this idea, Cracker? So I was working on a biopic for a famous runaway slave named Crispus Attucks, whose story I know quite well because he's from my hometown. Right. And it was around that time when one of my managers said, listen, we want to start pitching you in, in L.A. to some of the managers and studios and agents and studios for, for uh, studio work. Can you come up with something you know, new that's more narrative driven with some dialogue, working with actors as opposed to just flashing music videos? I said, sure, let me take this one section from Crispus, which I was writing, which was going to be that moment in time when slaves are put up on the blo uh, auction block and they're, you know, they're sort of just uh, put on display and they're sort of de humiliated and they're being sold. So at that point in time, when I was working on that exact scene, Charlottesville happened. And it wasn't the, it wasn't the action of the uh, alleged white supremacist that killed the woman in the, in the crowd with his car that, that made me think about this. It was the seismic shift in social media that I saw and felt from the white supremacist side, white nationalist side, that, that made me say, wow. Post, it's just two days after Charlottesville, after that woman getting killed, a lot of white people that I, I knew, even growing up in my hometown of Massachusetts, who I played, this, 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 this one guy I played hockey with, eight, eight nine, ten years old, great kid, I knew, I knew during those years, I even spoke to him in 30-something years, he now is posting on his Facebook page a Muslim, a, a, a meme, a, dis, a, dis, a disparaging meme of a Muslim uh, getting bleeped by a donkey. And uh, another friend of mine kept reposting an, an, a video of an, unarmed, of an unarmed black guy who, who runs past the camera, and then a few seconds later, a cop comes in and, and shoots the guy, you know, saying, oh, well, he probably deserved it. And, and these are just two small examples of all these things that I felt I saw was happening. And nobody else was really picking up on it. I'm like, but be, I think because I'm so in tune with what's happening in, in, in that community, I said, okay, what will make these white people feel like that is wrong. And I said to myself, ah, what if it was their daughter that they saw being killed? What if it was their mother, sweet as pie, getting cracked in the head with a bat? And that was the moment I said, you know what? That could be interesting. And then that you just evolved from there. Amazing. And does your wife feel as badly for the uh, black on black crime, little children getting killed by other black people? I mean, slavery, you can't even compare it to slavery it's so bad in the black community. They're killing one another. They're killing innocent children. They're killing the unborn babies in the black wombs. And 
that's worse than slavery itself, abortion, right? Do your wife feel as bad, badly for those situations as she did for this one incident? Uh, yeah, Kim, Kim is an extremely um, uh, God-fearing woman, and she is um, one of the most loving people that, 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 you, that you would ever, ever, ever meet. Right. Uh, and, and articulates her, her point very, very well. Um, and are you referring to um, uh, black skin and blacks here in America or in, in other parts of, of, of the well, world? Well, all over the country right. and around the world, but yeah. especially in America, blacks have no mercy for one another. They kill your children. They kill one another by the droves. Uh, abortion, they're killing the black children in the womb. Like, now they're going north, no one seemed to care. Is your wife feeling badly about those things? I, I am not sure that she is, has been exposed to that. Uh, and, 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 um, what do you mean? She doesn't know that black are killing one another, like, now they're going north? Uh, I, I don't believe, she's actually not spoken that to me, so I don't believe that she is, 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 is aware of that. Well, how does she know about this other stuff that's happening right now, if she didn't know about the black on black? Well, um, between having family in all different parts of the country, I know they FaceTime quite a bit. They, they, they talk a lot on, on phones, uh, friends and family. We also have family in, in, in Ghana. Um, so I know that uh, outside of traditional news that you might see, whether it's CNN, Fox, or, or, or whomever, uh, we, of course, uh, and also through social media, um, Twitter, Facebook, we are all exposed to, um, for the most part, what's, what's happening in the world. Uh, she obviously despises any kind of hate towards any race, and she's the first one to stand up for a white, a black, a Latin, a yellow, whoever, anybody being mis mistreated. Same, same with myself. We, right, we, but you're saying she's not aware of the black on black crime, and she's not aware of the abortion issue. So no, that black, is on, genocide. black on black, black on black crime, which is a which is black something black on black violence. Black on black violence, we can we, we can certainly uh, um, address due to. Um, I know, but are you saying your wife is not aware of those things? No, oh, she's certainly uh, aware of uh, systemic racism and, and, and how. No, I'm asking is she aware of the black on black crime, killing one another? Give me a specific incident. When you say black and white crime, are you talking about? Are you talking about something that would happen in Chicago or, or all or, or, around the country? But yes, yeah. yeah, Chicago, Detroit, yeah. Yeah. East East LA, South Central LA, yeah. Compton, all over the, all over the country, blacks are killing each other, like, and have no mercy about it at all. And now that the cops' hands are tired, it's going out of control. Are you saying your wife is not aware of those things? Yeah, and I, I I'm going to be honest with you, I I am not aware of. I know that crime exists on white on whites, black on blacks, black on whites, white on blacks, Asians. I'm aware that crime exists. I'm not aware of um, any mass black on black violence or um, the um, abortion issue you just mentioned to me. I, I, if, if, if there is something that I, I can learn, then please let me know uh, because I am not aware of anything specific the thing I'm most aware of is what's happening with, with. How are you not aware of the? You might not be aware of the abortion issues. You know, 77 percent of abortion mills are located. Planned who abortion mills located in the black community. Genocide, mm. worse than slavery. Uh, but I can't believe you being in the media, your wife being there. You're not aware of the black on black killing in Chicago and Detroit and around the no, country. No, I, I know crime rates are high everywhere. And, and what I mean about black on black killing each other. Right. So. I don't know how we, how we can address that conversation without having to go to the root of how that would actually have started. Why are blacks in that situation where they're only forced to, to actually deal with each other in, in, in violence? If, 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 bad, if bad kids are being raised by, by, by bad parents in bad neighborhoods, how, how, do you, how do you squash that? By correcting the parents. But if, 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 black parents, if black parents are in bad neighborhoods because of what's happened to their parents and then what happened to their parents, we as, as a country need to do better by, by them. But do you think making a movie called Cracker and reversing the, what you think the role is, how is that going to help? That's going to divide. It's not going to help. Here's, here's what I say about that. Here we are in 2020. Racism has never been fixed. 
There's not one person on the planet, there's no person in America that can say they have a badge or a degree that says, I'm a racism solver. Nobody. I'm there, a racism solver. Well, listen, there's been no... There's I been, can solve racism. There's been, you may be able to, no, but... No, no, I do every day. So there's been no kumbaya moment. There's been no song, preacher, prayer. There's been no movie, miniseries that has solved racism. You believe we, are that, in a, we are in a race war right you now. You believe that white people are racist? I believe white people suffer from white blindness. They are ignorant, they are ignorant to the plight of the majority of blacks that have... Uh, so do you believe white people are racist? I believe that white people suffer. They, they, listen, it doesn't have to be all the way left or right. I believe that there are white supremacists that don't want blacks to live, and I can, I can play you death threats that I've, I've received. I can send you guys some emails and, and texts. What, there's a lot of white people in the extreme side, which I, let me make a rant, I think there's about 5% of all white people that just hate anything that's non-white. Those people don't want to see any racial harmony. But a lot of the white people, like my sister, uh, who, who grew up in the same neighborhood I did, they just don't understand what racism truly is. They think because they have a black friend or this and the black music that, oh, I'm not, I'm not racist, I like all black people. I didn't own any slaves. That's, that, that's not the... That's not, so let me ask, are you saying that you believe all white people are racist or most white people are racist? I, I feel that there's a, a small percentage of white people that are devout racists and the bulk of white people suffer from white blindness and white ignorance to racism. There's a difference. You don't have to... And what is racism? What is racism? Racism is when one race feels like they are superior to another race and don't do anything to help that other race get on equal footing. And that's how white people feel about blacks? I feel that the bulk of American whites feel that they are above, of, above blacks and don't want to do anything to really help them get on the same level that they are at. And that's what makes them racist, right? That's what makes them suffer from white blindness. But not racist? Not racist. Uh, most black people feel that they are better than whites and that they are above white people. Does that make the blacks racist? Well, I know a lot of black people. I'd say the bulk of my circle are filled with black people. Right. And um, I don't think any of them ever, have ever said to me, we're better than white people. But those blacks, are, I may not know my flowers, but I know black people. And most black people feel superior to white people. Does that make the blacks racist? If, uh, I would say, if that is a, if that is a, a true fact, then I would say then that would make them racist because it would just be the reverse of what I just <laughs> said about white people. Are you racist? I'm not racist. W but you're white. The black people just because you're white, you're racist. But how is it you're not racist and you're white? You're well-dressed, you're making a lot of money, you got a black woman, what, and your white privilege, what makes you not racist since you are white? Well, as I said, the bulk of white America suffer from white blindness. I don't. I'm woke. I am not. I don't suffer from white blindness. And that's what makes you not racist. Exactly. And um, how do you feel about and you and your wife feel about the fact that most black people are robbed, raping, murdering, and killing white people, as opposed to white people doing it to the blacks? Is that racist for the blacks to be doing it to the whites? They had to knock out games, they uh, rape their women, they do all kind of stuff. Is that racist for the blacks to be doing that to the whites? Uh, yeah, th those are... Those, those violent crimes toward whites are done by black people. Is that racist? Th those people would be bad actors and racist. The same way the white people that killed my, my, my wife's uh, brother, those are, those are two racists, those are bad actors. But I wouldn't say all white people want to pick up some black person and throw them over a bridge and kill them. And so are you saying those blacks who are robbed, raping, and killing white people are racist? I would say those blacks that are doing that, just like the whites that are doing that, those, I wouldn't say that they're racist. I would say that those are, those are bad people that need to be locked up. So I, I'm black and slow and I'm not getting it. It's all like you're saying those white people are racist, right? But you're not saying that the blacks who are doing the same thing, are, not, are they racist? 
I would say that, I would say that the, the blacks that are doing the crimes that you just said. To the whites. To the whites are bad kids, bad, bad, bad actors that more than likely have a bad racial feelings towards white people. Are they racist? Again, on a case-by-case -case basis, I, I don't know. But I, I, on a macro level, I would say if they're doing it just to whites, I would say that they are racist. Let me, let me phrase it that way. They are doing it mostly to white people. Yeah. Are, I, they, are they yeah. racist? Uh, yes, they are racist. Uh, um, what is systemic? You believe there's systemic racism? Yes. And what is that exactly? The way I can best describe systemic racism is, is, is uh, if you have a kid who's 10 years old today, growing up in, in some bad neighborhood, and his parents are maybe 22, 25, I'm sorry, 30 years old, and they grew up in a bad neighborhood, and then their parents grew up in a bad neighborhood, and then their parents grew up in a bad neighborhood. They're only there because when, when um, they were technically freed as slaves, and mind you, I'm not a tremendous uh, scholar on, on, on history, so I may have, have right. dates and decades messed up, yeah. but for the most part, um, let me, let me actually say it this way. I have a 23-year-old production assistant who I just worked on a music video set, black girl from Texas and was out here. They saw the Cracker trailer, they were blown away, and that conversation led to, well, wow, yeah, you know what? We ain't been paid out yet. And, and that's the best way I can, I can, I can, I can sort of explain that. When she Is says, that systemic racism? When, when, she says, when she says we ain't been paid out yet, she's making reference to, uh, the Jews were taken care of after the Holocaust. Um, the Native Americans um, have been taken care of to some degree with uh, payouts from, from America. So Americans taking care of every other culture that they've done wrong by uh, or uh, helped aid except for blacks. And we, we our ancestors, when some people say clancestors, when we went and brought slaves over here to work for us and help build this country and they were eventually freed, they were never given their 40 acres So anymore. let me ask you this because of time. Are you saying that there's systemic racism because the black people want money for slavery? I mean, you're kind of jamming the two together. I'm saying that there's systemic racism because we've never, white people, white, America's never done their part to help black people get on solid footing after they were freed. By not giving them money? By not giving them opportunity, whether that's money or land or, or business. Uh, you know, we can talk about Juneteenth and Black Wall Street when they were thriving, when whites came and just slaughtered them. So if white people gave black people money, would they then shut up? I think uh, not just money, but I think... In, uh, they the want land? Uh, I'm not going to speak for each one. I'm just saying they need a fair shot the same way that w we've taken care of other uh, races. If those communities that you mentioned, if those black men and women got married, the parents were good examples for their children, raised them in a decent moral way, would they be begging for reparations or, b or blaming white people? Um, that's a big hypothetical. I would like to think that if they, were, if they had those opportunities, I don't think that it would be anywhere near as divided as it is right now. So they don't have the opportunity to get married and do it the right way? Very few blacks, by comparison to whites, have that opportunity. What is stopping them from getting married? Are white people stopping them from getting married? No. It's big. It goes it's go back to your point where you said bad parents, so they raise bad kids. So we have bad, we have bad parents, bad black parents, because bad black parents were, were, were born into, into systemic racism where they didn't have any, have any real opportunity. How are you born into systemic racism? What do you mean? So um, you've seen... You know phrases like ghetto and the projects. If you're born in the ghetto and the projects, how much opportunity do you have versus the white kids born in the suburbs? Um, when I was growing up, I grew up on a plantation in Alabama under the Jim Crow laws. None of this mess that you see today was happening. We weren't blaming white people. Uh, black men and women got married. They were they was a good example for their children. They treated white people the same way they would like to be treated. Whites treated blacks the same way. They were not relying on the government. They were not crying racism or any of that stuff. And that was like right under Jim Crow, right after slavery and all that kind of stuff. Why didn't we see that then as opposed to now? They weren't having babies out of wet lot. It was an embarrassment. Uh, black people believed in God. 
they were they took care of themselves. The same way the Jews did when they came out, they took care of themselves. Mm -hmm. They stayed close with their family. Why is it that if if blacks were doing that today, would they still would they be crying racism and wanting free stuff? Would they be blaming and acting like victims if they took control of their lives and lived in that way? That's a really good point and question. I don't have the depth of of, of answering for decades of of policies and politics that I wasn't a part of. But and, take and, and, and a no, guess no, at it. And, and, if and, they live that way, the way I just explained, the way we live, yeah. we didn't hate white people. Right. We loved America. It was a blessing to be born in America. Would they be whining and begging and, playing and burning down and destroying if they were decent people with decent families? Well, decent people, decent families, it, it, what, what you just said, that those last two parts really come from being able to have them be devoid of being classified as bad parents. If they were born in two parents in the way I was, yeah. raised in decent ways, not to hate but to love, right. parents were and was a good example, would the blacks be blaming the Atlantic victims today? I would, I, would have to, I would have to conclude that if they were born, if they come from that situation, I would have to conclude that no, they would not be. But why not push that rather than pushing this idea of slavery and white people are to blame? Because Why not push the right thing instead of the wrong thing? Well, again, 2020, nothing else has worked. The conversations... That will work, though. So let's, 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 let's have that play out. How, how, can you, how can you help make that happen? Well, I do it every day on my radio show, on my TV show. I write about it. No, no, I talk but, about listen, it. But the conversation... You know, helping the young men overcome No, that. and I, I applaud you. I applaud you 100% for wanting to make this world a better place and help people But why do not better. do it the right way instead of blaming white people? Because it's not true what's been said. And if you guys love black people, really love them, why not tell them the truth? You know that family work, you know that moral morality work, you know that treating people the way you like to be treated work. Why not teach that? So, again, teaching... And why not talk about that? Teaching and talking is fantastic. But when it, come, when it comes right down to it, it takes money and policy to help people do but what they But why not use that same money you used to make what, uh, Cracker? Why not make a, a film that tells the truth about the situation? Well, first, of all, first of all, my film is truth. My film, is, it, my film mm -hmm. lets people see racism in a way they've never seen it before. Do you know they, that they, I never saw that growing up? My parents didn't see it, my grandparents. It's all made up. It's not true. Maybe, you, maybe you've lived in, a, in this beautiful rose-colored world. All of my friends. But I'm telling you, what I've seen, I've seen blacks be treated negatively. I've, by I've, whom? I've, by white people. So you've seen black people being treated, have you seen black people treat ne white people negatively? Absolutely. And so uh, did you correct them? Whenever I can, I can. But, but, here, but here's the thing. Cracker on the heels of what we've seen with these cops that have been killing these black people. When was the last time you saw an article headline that says, unarmed white man killed by cops? Um, unarmed white man killed by cops? I don't know if I've ever seen that. So, but about, we've seen it but now. I have seen but we know, but, but, but hold on, you've answered that. But we've seen it now happen in uh, multiple weeks over the last several months. If black people were not fighting with the cops, if they were not criminals running away from cops. We saw on video they, George Floyd was not fighting with the okay. cops. George Floyd was sitting there. We don't know what George was a criminal as well. You do know that, right? Of course he was. But, but also, but, but, what, what, is the, what, what, is the, what does the Bible say about criminals? He pulled a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach. Understood. But let me ask but you the this. Bible talks know, about sinners who, who, who go on to Let me ask them. you this. If black, these black people who have been killed by cops, and a last, apparently last year it was only nine or ten, but if they were not criminals running away from the cops, fighting with the cops, uh, taking their tasers and shooting at, at the cops, would they be dead? The cops need better training. Would they be dead? The the, you talk, when you say taser, you, you can't lump, you just can't ask Would one. they be dead? Because all those people you just named off, were, most of them were criminals and a Ahmad fighting, was jogging in a neighborhood. He got hunted down by two white men. One's a former cop. I'm asking you a question, him. though. Would they be dead if they followed the instruction of the cops rather than fighting with them and running from them and taking tasers and cursing them out and resisting arrest? Would they be dead today? 
those cops were wrong in the way they even approached question. them. No, but but you, you would but they, be they were dead wrongfully today? Be, they were wrongfully they were wrongfully treated to begin with. These co those co those would co they be those dead cops today? Were bad cops. Would they be dead today? Say, ask a question again. If those thugs that you mentioned had not been criminals in most cases. Running Ahmad away, wasn't a thug. Ahmad are running away from the cops. Brianna wasn't fight, a thug. Fighting with the Brianna cops. Brianna got shot Hold in on. her home Hold on. doing nothing. <laughs> Cursing out the cops. Carrying on. Would they be dead today? Wait, who cursed out the cops? These people that are dead. They yell at the cops. They call uh, them names. Ahmad was pleading for You're his life and asking for, to see his mother before he died and she was already dead. I'm asking you a particular Yo, no, question. No, but they, no, but they, none of the four people I just I'm mentioned asking you a were cursing question. at the cops. Would they be dead had they... Followed the instruction of the cops. They were following the instructions of the cops, and Brianna had no instruction. Brianna was shot were dead in the apartment. With Brianna, were you there? Were you there? No, Matthew, were you there? You keep bringing her up. Were you there? I was not there. So how do you know what you're saying is true? Well, I don't think that everything that we learn on the news is a lie. How do you know what you're saying is true? Well, how do you know that? No, how you're do not you answering the question. You can't ask the question. We're the question, man. So ask the I'm black and I'm slow. You got to no, help me. No, you ain't me. slow. You smart. Oh, uh -uh, I'm slow. And you, you, you like to put these chess games in your, in your dialogue, try to get me in these corners. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's no, okay. No. I understand. No, no, no. I'm asking you if the people Ahmad had not... was shot running, jogging down the road. He was shot dead by a former cop. I have no idea who Ahmad is. I really Ahmad don't Aubrey care. in Florida. I really don't George care. Floyd <laughs> was... George Floyd... <laughs> I'm getting excited. Yeah, I know. If these people had followed the instruction of the cops what instruction are you and talking not about? resisted arrest, would they be dead? I asked you that question, yes or no? You're, 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 you're assuming that I'm not assuming anything. Yes, you are. I'm asking you a simple question. They follow, they follow the instructions from the Are you the a cops. Christian? Yes, I am. You just, not, you just told a, a, not a truth. Uh, well, what, how would I just lie? I'm asking you, if they followed the instructions of the cops, rather than fighting, resisting arrest, cursing them out, would they be dead today? Nobody cursed them out. Who cursed them out? <laughs> you picking out one thing. I'm no, you but you're saying, question. no, you're trying to paint those four way. victims I mentioned Let's put it as this way. being... Had not they resisted arrest, would they be dead today? They didn't resist arrest. You're not honest. Ama so let's Ahmad move on because of time. Re resist arrest. Let's George move did not on because of time. Let's move on. You're not being honest. No, but I'm being. Nice. Don't you can't you're call nice. me a liar when I'm not lying. Uh, there's a scene in the movie where a black slave master rape a white woman. Why did you put that scene there? Because if I'm going to help white people not be so blind, they need to see. And that's tame, by the way. By Hollywood standards, that's tame. There's no nudity. There's no blood. Right? That's a tame six-second clip of a, of a white woman, a white actress being raped by a black slave owner. What were you trying to prove? Why did you put it there? For this. White women and white men who are up in arms about that scene are not up, are not up in arms about a real-life murder of I'm a black man. Why did you put I'm, that I'm explaining scene to there? You. I'm explaining to you. Because white people who are up in arms over that scene are not up in arms when they see a black woman being raped by a white man. So why did you put that scene there? To prove a point that and racism point? exists. Amazing. And uh, are you trying to unite or divide? I am a storyteller as a director, as a writer. I'm trying to get a point across. And I, and I hope my point is to help people have a conversation that, that racism does really exist. Are you trying to unite or divide? I'm trying to unite. And, and that scene will help unite or divide? That scene will provoke the conversation about uniting. Amazing. When um, more white women are being raped by black men today, what do you think about that? Well, I think rape by any culture, by any means, uh, by any meaning is, is, is wrong. Is it racist? Well, if a racist is raping a woman of, of a black of another man race. raping a white woman today, and it happened by the drove. Is that racist? It's as racist as a black man raping a white woman as as a white man raping a white woman uh, raping a black woman. So I'm asking this: black man raping white women today is that racist? You're, I don't know what's in their head when they're raping. Black man raping white women today is it racist? 
that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big question that I don't have the answers for. White men raping black women today, is that racist? I don't know that the subject of rape and racism actually go hand in hand. But in my it, but, in there like it go hand in hand. So I'm asking you, white men raping black women today, would that be racist? <laughs> I like how you keep asking the same question with a different, with a different mannerism. Um, <laughs> I don't know that because a man rapes a woman, I think a man, if a man rapes a woman, whether she's white or black, I think it's a, 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 for the most part, it's, it's going to be based on whatever's in, inside their head. Black men raping white women, that racist. Again, you, you, I, I, I can't answer to the, what's inside the, race, uh, the rapist's head. But when you it, wouldn't call it racist. It could be. In, in, my, in my series, I have a black so could, slave master raping a white so woman to prove a point. So could white men raping black women be racist? Both races raping the other race could be racist. Okay. Amazing. Isn't that like amazing? Do you know there's no such thing as racism or systemic racism or any of that? Wow. I it's a made up lie. It's either good, and as a Christian, you should know that. It's either good or evil, right or wrong. It's not racist. That's a made up word because it's a lie that you can't prove, and you can't prove a lie. So they have made well, that well, word no, well, up. Well, no, that's not true because I've actually, I, I, I've actually, on, I, I've seen white women say, uh, I've seen white men call black men the N word and say, we hate you. We want to kill you. I've that's actually hateful. seen that's that. That's not racist. So that's evil. It's evil racism. It's either, no, it's evil spirit. Good or evil. It's not racist. Well, no, because no if, if, they, if, they didn't refer, if they didn't refer to a race, I would say, okay, yeah, they're just, they're just bad, bad, bad people. But they, when, you, when you refer to a race, you say, I'm going to kill you, you N-word. I'm going to kill you, you cracker. Those, those are... So when black people call white people white cracker, I'm going to kill you, they're racist? That's racist. So Black Lives Matter is a racist group. So Black Lives Matter um, and any any group, uh, any faction um, that has been created uh, has been created to help give black, black people- Is Black Lives Matter a racist group? No. You follow Black Lives Matter? Um, I, I support Black Lives Matter. Did you know that it was founded by a bunch of fat black lesbians, lesbians who hate God, who hate the order of the family, who hate the unborn child, who are masses? Why would you follow them? Um, I, I, I have not been told or advised or I've not seen any literature of what you just said. Go on to their be website, you'll see it. I've interviewed them. Go on their site, you'll okay. see it. Would you still support them once you find out that this is true? If I was to find out that Black Lives Matter was founded by demigods and what else? Black, fat, radical lesbians who well, worship in the KKK, who's, who goes against God, who goes against the nuclear family, who goes against the unborn children, who admit that they are monsters. When you see that on the site, would you still support them? Uh, if everything you said is, 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 is factual. It's factual. Would you still you, support them? I, 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 need to, I, need to reserve, I need to reserve an answer for that. So if you see it and it's true, would you support them? Again, I, I, I just wanna, I wanna, reserve, I wanna re reserve that answer. If they are bad people, if they are bad people and they only mean bad things, then I wouldn't support it. So I, but having said that, I, I don't, so I've never heard. So you go on the site and, and see I, I, on their own site yes, that yes, it's yeah, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. you will not support them. I, I'm going to go look at the site. Will you denounce them once you find out that it's true? Again, if, if, they're, if, if they're bad people and I, and I see, and I see that, they're, that they only want to make bad things happen, then I will certainly not want to support them if that is not the truth. Not want to, but will you? Again, I, have to, I just have to see what it says. Will your wife let you not support them? Um, well, my wife doesn't have any, have any say over what I support and don't support. Oh, good. Um, I got to ask. Uh, I want to I wanna put you in Cracker. Are you an actor? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast you in Cracker, see if you're available when we shoot. Oh, okay. That would be nice. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, are you in favor of dismantling the police departments? No. Oh, good. They are. Right. You know they are, right? I know that certain people are, yes. And yet you support them. Listen, it, we, we can macro every conversation, but we both know it, it's not that simple. Just like when, 
the, the, Senate, is the Senate wants to pass a macro bill, but inside that bill, there's all these different little micro things that need to be worked out. So it, that the, we live in a world of macro and micro, and you just can't, you know. All these uh, riots that you're seeing, this terrorist attack up on America, is it about equality or is it b black supremacy at work? No, I, I think it's, it's, it's a reflection of how of how systemic racism has affected them over the years. Much in the same way the, the riots in the Amazing. 90s. Amazing. Yeah. If, if blacks was more people, would they be burning down and destroying like this? If blacks were what? More people. God. Moral. More, yeah, more people. Would they be doing this? I, I, I would actually have to use this, this example. When, when I need a quick yes or no because we're out of time. When if whites came more, here and decimated a whole nation, of, a, 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 a whole race of people by raping and pillaging and lighting their villages on fire, or were they more people? That's not what I asked you. No, but, I, but it's the same question. I ask you, are they more people? What more people do what they're doing? I would have to re answer that with, if, if, if the white people that came and took this country over, if they were moral, I'd have, to use, I'd have to use that same answer for you on this one. Amazing. Isn't that like amazing you won't answer? No, it's like a, you're, you're, you're do asking. Do black lives matter? Absolutely. Do white lives matter? Absolutely. Do you love white people? I love white people. You love white people? I love white people. Okay. <laughs> I need to put you on the hot seat real fast. We're out of time, so I need you to answer these questions quickly. Okay. Oh, this is, this is, you're setting me up. Go ahead. <laughs> the hot seat. If Kanye West were for president in 2020, would you vote for him? Absolutely no way in hell. Barack Obama uh, illegally spied on his political opponent, Donald Trump. Are you okay with that? I don't know that's true. But if he did, I would say if he broke the law, he needs to pay for the law. Barack Obama is a beta male. Would you agree to that? No. Michelle Obama's big mama. Would you agree to that? I said she's a positive, strong black woman. But she big mama? What's the definition of big mama? You know how big mama. You rule Obama and eat up all the chicken and give everybody else the white meat. She eat all the black meat. Ah, I, don't know what her, <laughs> I don't know what her menu consists of, but I, I think she's a strong, powerful woman. Go ahead. What is more dangerous, black supremacists or white supremacists? Right now, white supremacists. Are you uh, a feminist? No. Do Joe, does Joe Biden love black people? Yes. Is MTV a force for good or evil? Ugh, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question. I'd say it's, it's, it's more negative than, than, than positive. Is Illuminati real? No. What has more, who has more free speech in, speech in America today, whites or blacks? It's equal. Amazing. Uh, there is a U.S. congresswoman who married her brother. Uh, do, you con do you condemn that? Um, I'm not aware of that situation. Ileana but if, she, if, Omar. She, if, she, if, if, if a woman married her own blood brother, and if it, 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 is it blood? Yes then I would have to say that that is, is immoral. Do you know who Ileana Omar is? She's, She's a country. Yeah, yeah. Should we ship her back to her country if we want to demolish the economy in America and America? Should we send her back to a I, refugee camp? Listen, I, I don't think that that congresswoman wants to see America. She fall. said it. Should we ship her back since she's a refugee? Uh, is she a refugee? I, I, I want to answer oh, this no, hot questions, refugee. but I, I don't, I, you're asking me questions of, was, that have some some, some, some condemnation in them that I, I don't know is true. Uh, the uh, uh, Chinese virus lockdown being extended for political reason? I call this the Trump virus. The Chinese lockdown, is it being extended for a political reason? I, I don't think so. You don't think so? Uh, I don't think so. Will you vote for the Great White Hope in 2020? Who's the Great White Hope? Trump. The one and the only. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm not a fan of people who are gutless cowards. Amazing. Did you have fun? Absolutely. <laughs> thank you for taking the hot seat, man, and thank you for coming. Thank Is you. Is there anything you, you want to promote, your film or anything like that? Um, because we were so successful in getting our point across that racism exists, we have been approached by several big networks to actually make my pilot episode into a much bigger platform for a full first season. Details coming soon. And I, will, I only agree to come on the show because I'm going to get one of these coffee cups because I like coffee. <laughs> and so you're going to put me in your movie, right? Yes, you're going to be cast as a black slave master. Oh, okay. That will be amazing. And are you, how do you feel about people saying that the Jews are paying you and that you're doing this? Well, uh, let, me, let me tell you. Uh, you're, George, you're being accused of that, yeah, right? Yeah, George Soros did not hire me. 
I didn't make this two weeks ago because of what's going on in, in the country, and I am not Jewish. So how do you feel about the accusations? I, it, it's, it's, it's. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I wish you well with that, man. I'm looking forward to catching a row in your movie. No, I'm, we're going to contact Kelly, and okay. she's going to tell you what day we need you on set. All right. We'll fit you with a wardrobe. Amazing. Thank you all for tuning in. Let me hear from you. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, share, and sign in. It was such an amazing interview. I know we went over, so I couldn't help it today. Thank you so much. Thank you again for Thank coming. you. Thank all you. Right. Appreciate it. Next time on The Fallen State. And so it was a given that a man went and did this and the woman stayed home yes. with the children. It's, it's interesting because in America, even though I think we're socially evolved in, in a lot of ways, it's hard to be a, a, a woman and have this big career yeah. and then be able to take care of your children in the way you want. That's right. It's right, and I have a lot of colleagues who struggle with that. Are most Indian men alpha males or beta males? No, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was afraid that was going to come up. <laughs>